Uh, I'm, as Lisa said, I'm Kim Damon Randall. I'm the director of NOAA Fisheries Office of Protected Resources. And we are really happy to be here today to talk to you all about our exciting new program uh, that's focused on technology and innovation for protected species. And we refer to it as ASTER or the Advanced Sampling and Technology for Extinction Risk Reduction and Recovery. Long title. Um, so we've been working on developing the ASTER program for about a year or a year and a half or so. Um, and this idea actually stemmed from a protected resources board meeting that we had um, back in December of 2022, uh, where NOAA Fisheries Assistant Administrator Janet Quaite joined us, and she challenged us to come up with a big, bold idea for protected species. The P Protected Resources Board is composed of leadership from the Office of Protected Resources and the Office of Science and Technology, the Assistant Regional Administrators for Protected Resources um, from NOAA Fisheries Regional Offices, and the Science Lead for Protected Resources from each of the science centers. And this board serves as an advisory board to NOAA Fisheries leadership on protected species issues. It helps improve the quality and consistency of the protected resources program nationally. Um, we have regular communication. We meet every six months um, and we ensure enhanced coordination across the, the PR enterprise. So this really helps to foster collaboration between and within the science and management enterprises. So given all that, uh, the idea um, that we came up with in, in response to Janet's challenge was to create and the science centers to collaborate on tackling some of the biggest challenges that confront our protected species today uh, using innovation and technology. So this is an effort that is very tightly linked between our science and management enterprises. Um, there isn't any dedicated funding for it yet, um, but we do have funding um, for innovative technologies through things like the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, and if you're not familiar with IRA, uh, this is temporary funding, but it's really being used to make uh, truly transformational investments um, in things that we're doing um, for um, areas under our jurisdiction at NOAA. Um, so ASTER came about at a really great time um, because of this IRA investment and the focus in innovation and technology. So if we can stand up our ASTER program and highlight all the investments that we're demonstrating across the country, we feel this will benefit everyone as opposed to everyone having to do these as individual efforts. And this is really the time to focus on how we can maximize the use of innovative technology to prevent extinction. So as you'll hear from Lindsay, the program is, is comprised of six strategic themes, and each of those is really important. Um, and it, together um, with the kind of the center of our aster flower, uh, we're really focused on how we can use innovation and technology for extinction risk reduction and recovery, or the three R's as we refer to them. And that's really the, the full focus of the program. And this is important because as everyone knows, extinction is forever. Um, these three R's, reducing extinction risk and promoting recovery of protected species, are designed to ensure that we don't lose any of our important resources on our watch. Um, so this program is really important to us. Uh, we want to um, talk to you all, share with you what we're doing. We know there's a lot of, of technology across NOAA uh, that we can collaborate on. Um, so we're very excited to roll this out to you today and answer any questions that you have. So I'm going to turn it over to Evan uh, for some opening thoughts, and then Lindsay's going to walk through the program. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Kim. Uh, again, hi, everybody. Thanks for coming today. My name is Evan Howell. I serve as the director of the, the National Marine Fisheries Service Office of Science and Technology, and I am the co-lead with Kim of at the Aster Project. As Kim was mentioning, as we were creating Aster, we were lucky enough to receive a National Marine Fisheries Service Inflation Reduction Act funding to really help us transform into a climate-ready fisheries. And when we say fisheries in the National Marine Fisheries Service, we talk about actual fish, but also a major part of our mission is the protecting and the, uh, of the protected resources that we have uh, in our jurisdiction. There were a few points on IRA I wanted to touch on. As Kim said, these funds are short-term and they need to be obligated by the end of FY26. Um, in this way, we were able to use these funds really act as a rocket booster for us for advanced technologies and new approaches on national initiatives and region-specific protected species like right whales. So the investments in IRA help us really target what we want to make these investments in. And the way that we chose to do the, a big part of this 
is through advanced technology. And we stood up what we call strategic initiatives in our omics, active acoustics, passive acoustics, our optical systems, remote sensing, and our un uncrewed systems. In these ways, these investments in advanced technologies across these six were ways that we felt that we could either accentuate, accelerate, or operationalize our ability to use these in our fisheries mission. So what you'll see in the presentation, you know, the six that I describe in these strategic initiatives, omics, active acoustics, passive acoustics, et cetera, and the aster themes that you'll see in the, in the flower design, they have a high degree of potential and actual crossover regarding this focus on advanced technology, specifically the advanced technologies in these petals. This is good. And we could think about these two as having the same focal area through the IRA investments, as well as the Aster plan, but each is coming at it with a different lens. Aster really does zoom in on the protected species applications in the strategic initiatives, advanced technology investments. And so some of these were either existing or we're accelerating them or areas for potential application. Aster also brings in a direct tie to management for these science initiatives that will help align, align the planning of the strategic initiatives and the execution by providing input to and testing the output from these initiatives as we're going through it. The science with management is an important component of this Aster focus. And so overall, through this IRA investment to accelerate our advanced technology adoption in fisheries, through these strategic initiatives and the protected species and management focus in Aster, we're working to ensure that coordination and support to operationalize these advanced methods to meet our mission goals, as Kim said, to reduce the extinction risk and promote recovery for our protected resources under our, our management jurisdiction. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Lindsay and welcome, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thanks, Kim and Evan. I'll share the presentation now. Okay, looks like you all can see that. Yep, looks great. Awesome. So hi everyone, um, thank you so much for being here. Um, it means a lot that you would take your lunch hour to listen to um, our program and uh, hear about what we're really excited about sharing this information on, on how it's being built. My name is Lindsay Stadler. I work in the Office of Protected Resources. I'm the Aster Coordinator, and I'm really excited to tell you um, about our risk reduction and recovery program for protected species. So I wanted to start off with an agenda to lay out the structure of the presentation and what I'll be covering, starting with an introduction, including background, not only on the program, but also NOAA Fisheries Office of Protected Resources and the history behind the program. Um, then I'll get into the details of the program with an Aster 101 approach. Um, I'll talk about where things are now and the forward-looking vision, um, and then we'll have some time at the end for questions and discussion. Um, and before I dive into things, I kind of wanted to set the stage as um, we've been mentioning that this program launched recently um, in 2023 and is in a development stage. Um, and we're here today to hopefully plant the aster seed, um, which is fitting since aster is actually a type of flower. Um, but we wanna help grow innovative ideas across NOAA and beyond for protected species risk reduction and recovery. So the Office of Protected Resources and Office of Science and Technology are within NOAA Fisheries, whose mission is to provide stewardship of the nation's ocean resources and their habitat, providing vital services for the nation, all backed by sound science and an ecosystem-based approach to management, leading to productive and sustainable fisheries, safe sources of seafood, recovery and conservation of protected resources, and healthy ecosystems. And there's some key words in here that are recurring themes throughout this presentation, and I wanted to highlight them to show you that this program is built on the foundation of this NOAA fisheries mission, which is science management and recovery and conservation of protected resources. So what do we mean by protected resources? 
These are protected species and their habitats that are protected under the Endangered Species Act um, and or the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Protected species under no fisheries jurisdiction include marine mammals like dolphins, porpoises, whales, seals, and sea lions, and Endangered Species Act listed marine and anadromous species like sea turtles, some corals, some abalone, certain sturgeon, many salmon species, and various sawfish species. And under the Endangered Species Act, um, which recently celebrated its 50th anniversary, so happy 50th to the Endangered Species Act, um, we are responsible for the conservation and recovery of more than 150 endangered and threatened species. Our work under this important piece of legislation includes listing species in the first place under the Endangered Species Act, um, monitoring species status, designated critical habitat to protect where they live, um, recovery of endangered and threatened species, um, developing policies, guidance, regulations, as well as working with partners. And under the Marine Mammal Protection Act, we're responsible for the conservation and management of whales, dolphins, porpoises, seals, and sea lions. Our work under the MMPA includes conducting stock assessments, conservation plans, minimizing bycatch, requiring mitigation and monitoring during activities that could disturb or harm them, and developing management approaches to address threats. But being charged with conserv conserving these resources has been challenging, especially in light of climate change, causing unprecedented shifts in temperature and ecosystem dynamics. So we're having to think quickly and innovatively to create solutions for protected species because extinction is forever. And maybe this is a little intense, but many, many threatened and endangered species are facing intense challenges and we don't want to lose any of them on our watch. And NOAA Fisheries is a leader in protected species conservation. Our scientists and partners use time-tested and advanced technologies, including remote surveys, satellite telemetry, fishing gear innovation, visual surveys, acoustics, and modeling to study and monitor marine and anadromous species, which improves conservation management. And we do this across the country. NOAA Fisheries has six science centers who focus on research and five regional offices who focus on management. So we have a lot of ground to cover and a lot of amazing people that cover that ground, um, but harnessing the collective knowledge to reach common goals can be challenging. And we also have this cultural component of how we do science from a historical perspective um, which actually stemmed from a pol public policy model that developed out of World War II called this rational comprehensive approach, where we traditionally have done science where science are the experts. We try to separate science from external influences, pass the problem to the scientists. The scientists work, come up with solutions and answers, and then pass the problem back to the people asking the questions, or in this case, managers. But scientists don't provide solutions in isolation. They work with others in defining the problem and developing the processes to address the problem and identify potential options and solutions. And that's one perspective, but not the only perspective. And all perspectives should be valued and used to help develop solutions. And this is something that we address with the Protected Resources Board that Kim was mentioning earlier, where we have been trying to actively shift away from that siloed approach to a more collaborative one. And this collaborative approach is in line with the concept of co-production, which can be extremely effective in developing solutions and collective outcomes. And this is an emerging buzzword that I recently learned about, um, but I've been reading a lot about it and have since then started to hear it a lot more in the science and policy space. and. Uh, felt it captured what we're trying to accomplish with Aster by fostering this collaboration of different people to reach a common goal. And we can't do this alone. 
So a big part of this program is the outreach aspect where we, um, we want to help highlight and amplify what we're already doing and provide a place to go with innovative ideas and collaborations regarding protected species sampling and technology to reduce risk and promote recovery. Which is where Aster comes in, which is a protected resources board initiative. And all of life is what lens you see it through. So this program takes all of that information into consideration and sees things through this specific lens, a risk reduction and recovery perspective for protected species. So now I'll start getting into the details of the program and uh, to give it some definition. We came up with this statement here, um, but instead of reading it from the slide, I broke it down into key messages since these words were strategically chosen to represent the main goals of Aster, which is a NOAA Fisheries program that acts as an innovation incubator, meaning that it's a place to grow innovative ideas transcending regional and species-specific challenges with the key message being that it's collaboratively to address shared challenges across species. To strategically develop and advance innovative technological solutions with the key message being that advanced sampling and technology are the tools here. To prevent species extinction by reducing risk and promoting recovery, with the key message being that protected species and the three R's are the focus. But we've also talked a lot about how Aster is a mindset. So we've captured that here in the mission, which is to establish a growth mindset and culture to readily adapt to the shifting landscape of climate change and recover protected species by developing and or applying the best available tools and solutions. It can be easy to fall in a fixed mindset, mindset, especially when dealing with mandates as managers, but with Aster, we wanna focus, foster creative thinking and grow innovative ideas by bringing together innovation and setting that culture and then having a culture of innovation. The objectives of Aster are to provide a common framework for coordination, communication, and outreach to identify priorities and seek efficiencies. We want to collaborate across NOAA fisheries, NOAA widely, um, between agencies, with external partners, and even internationally. We want to ensure that solutions developed for one species can be applied broadly to others as appropriate. And we want to ensure that the limited funding available for protected species is leveraged and used as effectively as possible to address a multitude of challenges and species. And the aster flower is our diagram for the program concept, which stems from technology and blooms innovative solutions for extinction risk reduction and recovery of protected species. The petals represent the current strategic themes the initiative focuses on furthering, including artificial intelligence and machine learning, uncrewed systems, advanced statistical methods, acoustics, omics, and imagery. And there's intentionally overlap to represent um, interpetal synergies and the connection there. But to really drive this message home, what makes Aster unique is the target, the three R's at the center. Reduced risk means increasing chances for recovery and decreasing likelihood of extinction. And that advanced sampling and technology are the tools to help get us here. And we're looking to support and grow innovative ideas that lead to transformational advancements by increasing efficiency. And an example of this is using generative artificial intelligence that can help us produce documents that, that help us meet requirements under the Endangered Species Act, freeing up time to focus on other things that will help us further the NOAA mission. So now I'll get uh, go more into detail about each of the strategic themes, starting with artificial intelligence and machine learning. 
which can be used for things like understanding and anticipating protected species presence and persistence in areas of risk to inform dynamic management decisions. An example of this is being able to detect animal vocalizations from acoustic recordings, which is the image that we're seeing on the left. This is a spectrogram from an acoustic recording and those green lines are the vocalizations from whales. Um, and this can be really helpful when you have huge data sets, these tools can manually detect um, these vocalizations, freeing up lots of time and resources. Um, and uncrewed systems are autonomous or remotely operated technologies that collect information without direct human contact which allows us to monitor species non-invasively, which is huge. On the left, um, we have an example here of drone footage of North Atlantic right whales to detect changes in health condition over time. And this advances our ability to achieve conservation goals and effective environmental resource management. Then for advanced statistical methods, um, by using these methods, scientists can analyze multiple data sources and explore patterns in the data and estimate important population metrics. Statistical models can be used for estimating abundance, distribution, and movements over wide areas and can be used to map where animals like humpback whales are likely to occur. And this allows us to make sense of and learn from extensive data sets to inform management decisions and pr promote protection of species. So sound is a huge component to ocean dynamics and many protected species rely on sound to communicate, locate food, navigate, mate, and avoid predators. Passive acoustic monitoring of marine mammals is an efficient and cost-effective way to assess their occurrence over large and remote areas. And scientists can use acoustic data to evaluate changes in species distribution, especially in light of climate change. Um, they can assess cumulative impacts range wide for highly mobile species, track status and trends in baseline conditions and detect presence of vocalizing species in near real time. Um, and quieting technology such as alternative propulsion, ship design and noise abatement systems can reduce human caused noise impacts to, protect, to help protect marine species and their acoustic habitats. Um, and advanced sampling and omics are uh, biology disciplines focused on molecular processes in cells and tissues. For example, genetic analyses of tissue samples or eDNA. Um, and you can examine population structures, health of individuals, often with small samples and minimal disturbance using these methods. This provides qualitative and quantitative data on presence, abundance, and distribution of protected species. We can monitor and survey species where resources are, and circumstances are otherwise limiting, and it can even allow time travel via, through historical perspectives on populations through previously collected water and other samples. And like I said, examples of this are eDNA and advanced health sampling. So to showcase this on the left, you can see with one drop of water, we can glean so much information using these methods, which is invaluable to protected species conservation and beyond. And imagery um, from satellites and uncrewed aerial systems are an emerging method of data collection Examples include um, multi-spectral imagery to detect protected species in hard to survey habitats. An example of this uh, on the left is discriminating among ice associated seal species. Um, another example are using remote cameras to monitor protected species populations continuously and non-invasively like with stellar sea lion, uh, seasonal distribution and vital rates at hull out sites. We can use high resolution satellite imagery to detect whales from space 
to aid in understanding shifts in distribution and habitat use. Um, and we can also use electric monitoring, electronic monitoring on fishing vessels to document protected species bycatch, uh, for example, in fisheries that are difficult to monitor using human observers. So what are we going to do with all of this information? Um, in the initial stages of Aster, we'll seek to showcase all that we're already doing within these strategic themes across regions um, and species and foster gr that growth mindset and culture to co-develop future innovations. To be able to do this, we have um, a, this structured committee that we're in the process of forming that consists of NOAA Fisheries Protected Resources staff across regional offices and science centers to bring together our collective intelligence to further the NOAA mission, science, service, and stewardship. But we're also seeking to collaborate across NOAA and are contemplating how that fits in here to this committee structure so that we can minimize duplication of effort. We're wondering how can we take the Aster goals and leverage other parts of NOAA that have similar expertise. And acknowledging that advanced sampling and technology touches so many different parts of NOAA and we want to make the best use of that. And as I mentioned, um, we are in the process of developing the program. We have been working with a phased approach um, and currently are in phase three, where we're operationalizing and developing the implementation plan, where eventually we will move into the fourth phase and have this continued implementation, coordination, and collaboration. And um, we have been scoping potential partnerships, both within NOAA and beyond, including programs and initiatives like the United Nations Ocean Decade, Marine Life 2030, NOAA Ocean and Coastal Council, uh, the Subcommittee on Ocean and Science, Ocean Science and Technology. Um, we are actually hosting a satellite event at the Ocean Decade Conference coming up in Barcelona. We're considering the Oceans Conference in Halifax, Nova Scotia, um, as well as the Ocean Sciences meeting coming up in 2025. Um, and we're looking to expand these ideas. These are just some initial ideas that we've been scoping for potential partnerships, which is one of the reasons we wanted to present here today to start thinking about these more broadly. And just a plug for that um, satellite event that we're hosting at the Ocean Decades Conference, we're working with FAO um, to host a satellite event um, called Ocean Insights, Marine Ecosystem Modeling and New Technologies for tom Tomorrow's Climate Decisions. And as we continue to develop the program, we envision building more connections by engaging in outreach opportunities like this one. Um, it's awesome to be able to present um, at the with the NOAA Central Library. So thank you for this opportunity and thank you for attending today. Um, and maybe we'll see you at conferences. Maybe we'll connect and exchange ideas and explore ways that we can collaborate move, moving forward. Um, either way, I hope this opens the door to foster the growth mindset and culture that Aster hopes to add to the NOAA community, um, whether you're in protected resources, NOAA fisheries, NOAA broadly, other agencies, tribal groups, or beyond, we see value in diverse perspectives. And we see the benefit of pre presenting to you today uh, while we're still in the developmental stage to gain those perspectives early on to minimize duplication of effort whenever we can. Um, and my advisor in grad school had this quote at the bottom of her email signature. And at first it used to make me feel really anxious because in grad school, I always felt behind and like I wish I had started six months ago, but this message has really stuck with me. And I still think about it a lot because it applies to so many different things and encourages me to get started on things, even if they don't feel fully formed, 
because six months from now, you'll wish you started today. So thank you, Katrin. <laughs> So in summary, the main messages that I hope you walk away with are what this program even is, which, um, which is a risk reduction and recovery program for protected species using advanced sampling and technology, um, that this is a program that brings together science and management nationwide through co-production, um, and that we're seeking to build out our network within NOAA. So we hope to hear from you, and we hope you are as excited as we are about the endless possibilities that Aster presents. And thank you to everyone that's helped uh, develop this program, this presentation and beyond. And thank you again all for joining today. Um, please feel free to reach out. I have my email listed there. And also there's a QR code uh, for the web page that we've posted if you wanna check that out um, to see some more details on the program. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I really appreciate your presentation. Um, go ahead and and uh, get ready for for our questions and answers by putting your webcam on. Excellent. All right. So, audience, we have a few minutes to answer your questions, and we would love to hear them. So, please type them in the Q and A chat, and I will uh, share them with our speakers. You're able to ask questions anonymously. I, I mentioned that in the beginning, we just have to toggle to the very bottom of the uh, Q&A tab and uh, push the uh, anonymous button if you prefer to not your name not to show up on the screen. And a quick reminder, this presentation is uh, being recorded and will be available on the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel later today in case you might know someone who couldn't join us and who would be very interested in hearing more about the ASTER program. So um, I'm waiting for some questions. And, but again, thank you so much for the presentation and the excellent introductions as well. And let me uh, add the link to our YouTube channel in case anyone wants to share this. And, and Lindsay, I, go ahead and add your email address in case anyone wants to grab that and ask you a question later on. Here's our first question. I'm gonna send that to the sheen. It asks, it says, thank you all, great talk. I recognize you're at the fourth stage of implementation and it is a ways out, but when it's finally implemented, how do you envision participants will interact and share knowledge, workshops, seminars, et cetera? I can start um, and then Evan or Lindsay can add. I think, um, I think all of the above. Um, there's so much work going on um, in uh, development of different technologies and innovative solutions that I think you know people are presenting at conferences and um, we have various workshops that I think this information would come out at. There's papers. Um, I think we really want to make sure that, um, especially as the IRA money um, timeframe sort of starts to end, that we're really making sure that the Hill knows how we've. Um, really use, a, use this investment, this temporary investment in funding to the best advantage of the protected species. So doing hill briefings and things like that to really um, magnify um, and amplify the message that we are able to use these technologies to address some of the biggest challenges for protected species. So I think it's anywhere we can get the information out, we'll be trying to do so. Yeah, I'll add a little bit, Kim, I, I agree with you. And I think that you know, some of what we can leverage is while we're actually doing the IRA investments, we are also looking at, you know, doing, trying to do symposia or some other methods of bringing people together to look at progress reports and reviews. Um, we're also making a really strong push to have managers involved at all stages. And with Aster, it brings both of those together. It brings the, the focal point again of, you know, while we're looking at advanced technologies in fisheries total, the protected species aspects for the extinction reduction and recovery is a major component. And so whether we're having these things naturally or we do specific aster things, aster is kind of an aggregator as well as to bringing those two focal points always to the forefront in the work that we're doing. It's a communicator in letting people know what work is being done. And hopefully it's going to be a recursive cycle where you, by that communication, you're having people maybe developing advanced technologies starting to think about how those would be applied towards this extinction re reduction and recovery. So I do see this having several different ways of coming through. I think you, you nailed at least two or three of them 
also having a communications campaign, as Kim was talking about, to really keep bringing this at the forefront would be important as well. Thank you. Uh, this question is uh, asks kind of a similar question. How is this different from what your office is currently doing? Is there more of an emphasis on partnerships? So I can I can start again. Um, so I think what's different is that um, I think that this focus on technology and how we can use technology to help solve um, some of our issues, like um, Lindsay mentioned, the generative AI. Um, and using that to potentially help us, um, you know, draft sections of ESA Section 7 documents like biological opinions or recovery plans or five-year reviews so that we can free up resources to really focus on implementing recovery actions. Um, that's one thing um, that I think is new. Um, looking across the spectrum at, at the technological advancements that have been done for sampling for protected species for one species and how we can apply that more broadly to other species. So making making those connections, I think, um, tighter. Um, and also, as Evan has said, it, it really connecting what's going on with technological innovation for science with the management needs and making sure that those, those are tightly linked. I think those are all things that this program is helping to further and, and promote. Yes, I think this one also builds on that. Uh, what if we are severely under-supported to track species and staff funds to collaborate for tracking infrastructure currently? Yes, I'm not sure that's a what if. I think it's a, it is actually a fact that we are under-supported for a lot of species. Um, and so looking at ways to do things more efficiently um, with less resources using technology is one of the key key points of this program. Um, and also, um, I think, you know, trying to take things that we're learning for one species and apply them to others makes us more efficient with our limited resources as well. I don't know, Evan might have more to add to that as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm seeing a bunch of questions fly in, which is awesome. And there's some, some ties in there. And Kim, what I'd say is that one of the things that we're, I say we do and people do all the time, but maybe in our offices, we weren't as focused on is the innovated aspect. And I think Esther is really pushing on a lot of the innovation. And I think your ideas for the whale strike um, limitations and the advanced technology focus there. And I think it's not just what we're not doing in our office and bringing it in, but it's also because of these limitations, a lot of the innovative ideas come because of limitations. We know that we cannot you know, sample every, every area of the ocean or, or, or spot every cetacean or pinniped. So how can we look at these? And one of the questions I saw that might come up is, you know, can we count wells from space with satellites? You know, and, or can we get to abundance and quantitative um, results from omics? And at this point, we're looking at uh, more limited applications, but that to me is the point of Aster, that we invest in these areas to really try to get to solutions that we don't even know might exist yet. And then I think definitely for other parts, whether it's Nezus or other areas, starting to focus on the problem set that we have. We don't have the ability to go out there and count every whale. What other tools do we have in our advanced technology portfolio that might be able to help us solve some of these problems? I see Aster being a big part of that aggregation and communication. This uh, question asks, uh, how can other parts of NOAA collaborate with Aster? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and one of the reasons why we wanted to have this uh, this lunch and learn. Um, you know, we're working actually on um, a, a new communication system using AIS, um, working with the Coast Guard to um, send out alerts to mariners about our seasonal management zones for North Atlantic right whales. Um, and I could see there's definitely um, some benefit to that for weather alerts and things like that. So I think there's. There's lots of things that we do broadly within NOAA um, that we can be collaborating on on these advanced um, technologies. So if you have ideas, please let us know. Lindsay put out her her email. Um, I, you know, I think you can look for for Evan and my emails. We we want to make those connections and make sure that we're working tightly within NOAA on all of these technological advancements. One thing I'd add, and maybe Lindsay, I don't know if you have anything to add, is that as we form the teams, you know, we're we're looking first within fisheries for some of the, the participation within the teams on there. But if you are working in any of the areas of the pedals or you have other technology that you feel, as Kim said, please do reach out to Lindsay 
and that we could make sure that we've got that connection made. Um, this next question asks, is the data you can gather from a single water sample mostly qualitative? Uh, yes, there was the species here at some point, et cetera. Or are there qualitative data also? I mean, yeah. So, yeah, as I kind of mentioned, I was definitely trying to take like three or four questions because I don't think we're going to get through all of them and they're really good. Um, yes, at this point, a lot of the omics is in the qualitative presence, absence. Did we have something here? We're trying to resolve, you know, at what time frame, how long ago. And then if we're both, we're having the same problem, we cross this over for fish or cetacean or other protected resource species. What is the abundance? You know, can we get to a point where there's abundance? And that's the technology usage that we're trying to go through now is to get to the abundance phase. Most of the time, what we're doing is trying to couple it with other methods like active acoustics, which can give us more of a quantitative measure for some of the species if we know their characteristic signals. Um, and that's that's still some of the work that we're looking to do. Not to just add that the omics and, and eDNA is, is a great tool um, in particular because it's non-invasive and for protected species, that's, that's a really important element. So I just wanted to Will Aster have calls for funding in the future to support some of these proposed collaborations? Our hope is that we can leverage what's being done now with existing funding, either you know that's out there already within NOAA or that we have for IRA to really show the positive benefits of, of, of investing in advanced technology so that ultimately we can get funding for the dedicated secure funding for the program in the future. So that's our hope is that we can really show how all of these efforts benefit protected species uh, recovery and extinction risk reduction. Um, I'm gonna add this question here. I think this might be the last question, but we do have other questions as well, which I will make sure the speakers get after the presentation. Um, this question asks, I am in Nestus and we have low earth orbit and geosynchronous orbit satellites. We have been approached by a company that believe they could actually pick out individual whales from space. Is this something you see possible? Yeah, I mean, Evan, you can probably speak to this more. I know for North Atlantic right whales, this is something that we are looking into and um, it, it looks very promising. There's some issues with, you know, cloud cover, so weather can, can affect it, but I do think that it's possible, Evan. I, Turn it to you to answer more. Yeah, I think that for any any species that we're looking at that either hauls out or does breathing at the surface, there is the ability. It's all a matter of the the satellite resolution and what we're able to detect. So I think that just this question, it would be a great thing to reach out um, to folks on the Astro teams, especially around remote sensing. We have a remote sensing um, IRA strategic initiative, and there's work that's being done with some Maxar data and North Atlantic right whales, as Kim mentioned. But I think being able to use the data that we have within our NOAA family would be incredible. And so it's really a question of seeing if we could connect the right people in this. So we, we have that. So I think just if you could reach out to Lindsay, we could follow up with you, that'd be great. So I, again, I just wanted to thank everybody, uh, Lindsay, Kim and Evan for sharing the Astra project with the community on the library seminars platform. And audience, uh, NOAA Central Library appreciates that you joined this library seminar, and we encourage you to join us again for future webinar events featuring NOAA science. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Take care.